Good morning and welcome to the Kite Affairs panel discussion. So we are here today to discuss about a recent issue happened in Sri Lanka. So as we know that Sri Lanka has been facing a civil war for over 30 years against the LPCE, also known as the Tamil Tigers. So it, uh, it's only four years since the war has finished and they have been living in peace for only just four years. And recently, we have heard from the news, from the media, and we can read from the internet, that Sri Lanka has been facing for another major problem concerning about the halal certificate issue. So to discuss about this issue, we have invited four panelists to give us their different perspectives about it. So from my right side, we have Ms. Rianti, the Buddhist theologian, um, Mr. Hussein, a representative from the All Ceylon Jamiyatul Ulama, or we call it ACJU. And from my left, we have Ms. Afra, the chairman of Indol, Indol Lankan Private Limited. And we have our um, Prime um, Defense Minister, Sir Juma. <laughs> So as we know that in Sri Lanka, most of the people are Buddhist, which is 50%. 12% are Hindus, 8% are Christian, and only 10% are Muslim. So the real issue is that between about the Buddhist, the extremist Buddhist group only, and the Muslims concerning about the halal certificate. So to know exactly what happened, I would like to ask Ms. Rianti, as a representative from the Buddhist community, if what are the issues arises from the extremist group, which is the Buddhist power force, regarding this halal certificate? First of all, I would like to thank you all of you to give this uh, opportunity in the panel discussion for today. Now, actually, I'm not against the halal certification issue. As I know, this issue was started by the particular group that is called Bodhu Balasena or Buddhist Power Force. Bodhu Balasena it is non-political, but it is the action-oriented civil group that has promoted the Buddhist philosophy and also in Chinese culture and heritage. And then the Bodhi Balasena is the uh, is the Sinhalese ethnic group. According to Sinon, the today's news that the Sinha, the Sinhalese population is three quarters of the population in Sri Lanka whereby the population in Sri Lanka is 20 million of people. Then, the Muslim constitute have good relationship with the Sinhalese group only 10%. So, nowadays, is Sinhalese uh, the cause of the evolution of the halal certification issue that because some of the main reasons. First of all, the the Sinhalese said that the all Ceylon Jamiatul Ulama is the one who gives the halal certification issue. Uh, sorry, the 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 ACJU is the one who produce the halal certification. In this case. The Bodhu Balasena said that the uh, ACJU is forcing the manufacturer to take the halal certification, whereby they can uh, earn much money from this. Can, uh, according to them, the ACJU take $1,377 per year for each product from the manufacturer. Then, and then, this one, according to Bodhu Balasena, that the, the halal certification is give 
the negative impact for the manufacturers. First of all, they have to increase the uh, the price of their product because they have to spend a lot of money to pay the halal certification. And then, uh, <clears throat> this the another problem is BBS or Body Balatina believe that that ACJU or all Sinan Jamiatul Ulama uh, give the money of the halal certification to help the terrorists. For example, like Al Qaeda and so on. And then the Bodu Palestina also said that uh, because of the manufacturer that spend a lot of money, how can they and they gain the profit? For example, imagine that if the one manufacturer has the more than 40 products, so we need to multiply what? by $1,377 US. So, in this case, of course, the manufacturer as a business, they want to gain the profit from that. That's why Bodu Balatina, they did the, they, again, the halal certification issue. Thank you. Okay, um, so thank you, Mr. Rani. So, as we have heard from her, that she said that the ACJU is taking a lot of money from the manufacturer because of this halal certification. And the big issue there is that the money that they get, it says that it, uh, they give it to the terrorists. So as the ACJU representative, what can you say concerning about this matter? Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum I'm pleased to represent the JU today. <coughs> Inshallah in future. Um, our, our Buddhist friend, actually brother, uh, have five misconceptions about Allah's education. Before that, I'd like to show you the, the logo of Allah. This is the logo of uh, Allah's certification issued by Sri Lankan. I mean, whole Ceylon, Ceylon is Sri Lanka, whole nation. So this is the certification we are issued. The third thing I want to emphasize here, we won't, the, the third thing they said is we are forcing the product or we are forcing the manufacturers to take halal certification. It's completely uh, a false statement, uh, just a rumor. Because uh, our halal, if you go to our halal, uh, Website, we have put the halal certification process because the first thing that we have, if any company or any product, if they want to, let's say this is a bar, uh, a baraka product, if they want to take halal certification for this product, they will send us a request letter by email or they will visit, pay a visit to ACJU or they will call us. If we agree upon that and we will send them a SOP, Standard Operational Procedure. There will be like do's and don'ts of the halal certification. If you get this halal certification, you must follow these procedures, you must follow these procedures, that do's and don'ts of the halal process. And uh, we will send them the application so that after reading the SOP, the, 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 the product or the company will fill up the application. So they will send us to uh, ACJU, they will send to our headquarters and since that day we will start to audit their firm, audit their company. After auditing, if we found out any kind of uh, ingredients which are not suitable, which are not permitted in Islam, we will give them what and things. In, in, instead of this, this product, you can use this product. We will give them what and things. In that case also, we are not forcing them. We are not forcing them. Up. If they agree upon it, or if they do not agree, we will say, why we are coming back. We are going back, we say, okay, finish. If, if they agree upon it, then we will give the procedure how to develop the harass certification. Then if they come under the, the permitted or thing, so if, in the, if they change the ingredient, we may use them, we may give them harass certification. And the second issue, she said, uh, earning money, it's about, for one product, they said about 175,000 rupees. She mentioned in dollars, 13,000 something. Yeah. 
for one product 175,000 rupees yearly. This is also our whole statement. Uh, if we have uh, clearly ex expressed this, we I mean, expressed this uh, the, the table how we are taking money from the product. We have clearly expressed it. If if it is uh, one to five, if, let's say our company, a small company, it has only one product. Okay, we charge them 500 rupees. 500 rupees is about 10, 10 or 12 rupees. 500 rupees means 10 or 12 rupees. If the, if the company has four products, four into 500, so they will, they have to pay about 2,000 rupees per month and 24,000 rupees per year. The same thing goes, if the product is more than 100, she mentioned that if it is a 40 product, what more, more product, what can we do, what can they, what can they do, they must pay on top. No, it's not like that. If it is more than 100 product, our charge is only 20,000 rupees. 20,000 to 25,000 rupees. And the other thing she mentioned that uh, terrorist groups, we are giving money to terrorist groups. It's a real. That one also a false statement. If you uh, if you could pay a visit to ACJU, we can give you the audit. Every year we are auditing our halal division. Every year we are auditing our halal division, and we have already submitted our documents, the audited report to the defense minister, to the crime branch, everything, and we uh, we clearly say that we we have no link with uh, any terrorist group in the world, and uh, that's all for me. That's all from me. I think I have clearly expressed the, my view. So I would like to. Okay, so thank you for the uh, clear view of the ACJ. So moving to our uh, chairman of Bengal product. So we, uh, you know that there is a legal process in issuing a halal certificate. Is it true? And also, um, as a manufacturer, do you follow it? And uh, how does it affect your company? Does it increase your customer or it's like decreases? Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to come and talk here. Well, to answer your first question, like how is the procedure of when uh, AC is Well, like uh, first of all, like before when we started uh, vendor products, we didn't have the halal certification logo, and there was like lots of rumor around the country saying that we had uh, we use animal oil for our products. Then we tried to explain them in three different languages that we don't use animal uh, oil in our products. So after all, like no one like there were still rumors were continuing. Then like we noticed that a product that has halal logo is more uh, recognized in the country. So we requested the ACG use to come and give us the halal certificate. So they gave us uh, like uh, they gave us a form which had like do's and don'ts. They gave us so many information and then like uh, on the spot they came, observed us and some of the equipment they told us don't use it, this is not good like according like if we use it they can't give the halal certification. So we agreed we had an agreement among them and we took, uh, we uh, got the halal certification. After we got the halal certification, we had like a lot of profit and also people from the Middle East, Middle East countries, they started to export, they started to export, like import to their country our products and we exported to them. So there was a trade between two, two countries. So we got a very like profit from them also. We had like, uh, according to the cost, uh, she mentioned 17,500. Well, I would say it's a false, uh, it's a false statement. Uh, 135,000. I would say it's a false statement because I have, we, we produce 13 products and still we have to pay only 9,000 rupees per year. Per year only 9,000 rupees. So it's a false statement. So like because of the halal certification there is no loss to our company. We have lots of uh, benefits and people are buying it more. The consumers are mostly like Muslims and Muslim countries that is buying our products. And if we take off the halal certification logo, we will have a loss of 15 million rupees. Uh, so this will be a very big 
lost for our company and we will lose 200 employees if we take the logo. And not only looking at the uh, window company, when we look at the restaurants in Sri Lanka, McDonald's and KFC, which is known as the famous restaurant in the world, is internationally known, known and there are 76% of Muslim customers visiting those restaurants every day. That means only 24% are non-Muslim. So if the halal certification logo is taken off, that means that these companies or these restaurants also will gain a big loss. So what I feel, to my personal point of view, what I feel is if the halal certification logo is taken off or, or from the government, if they tell us to record it, then there will be like uh, lots of loss in the country. Not only in our country, like even for the products that we export to other countries, because mostly the products that is exported are from Muslim countries like Middle East and Maldives. These two places are mostly where are still a kind export thing. So I think it will be a lot. Okay, so we have heard from different perspectives about the halal certificate issue. So now we will give the chance to our defense minister to give us so how will the government will solve this problem. Uh, thank you very much, uh, coordinator, for giving me this opportunity to clarify on this sensible uh, issue. Uh, from the government, uh, and I'm here to represent the government concerning the halal certification. Uh, but before I, I, I give the clarification about this issue, I would like to give a brief background about uh, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka was in war uh, for around 30 years. And now Sri Lanka is just experiencing uh, four years of peace, which I think everyone in Sri Lanka is enjoying. Now, facing uh, from that perspective, uh, the government would like everyone to enjoy peace. So we may not tolerate any, any, any issue of tension that may rise up. We would like to promote peace among the people of Sri Lanka because we really deserve it uh, because of our history. That was not very good. Uh, concerning the issue of uh, life certification, the government uh, is still taking, is taking some measures. Uh, we, we, uh, we come up with select committees that are listed from all parties. We are listed from the Buddhist party and uh, uh, perspective, and even the Muslims. And now, when the government comes up with uh, a clear, a clear uh, stand on this issue, we shall call for a, co a, co uh, a media conference and then we let the uh, nation know about our stand concerning this issue. Because it is really a sensitive issue and uh, that the government is uh, delicately handled. Uh, the other issue I would like also to say is that uh, the government, this government is giving uh, freedom of peace. As you know, Sri Lanka is having more than uh, uh, more than so many religions. So we have the Buddhists, we have the Christians, we have the Muslims. And now the government, this government is giving freedom of, uh, freedom of worship to be, uh, people to be free to be their religions. So we are supposed to take that in consideration on this issue. And when we come up with something clear, like I said, we shall let the nation know concerning this issue. Lastly, about uh, the tension that is coming up because of the halal certification. Uh, I would like to make a clear stand to the media from the government that the government is not going to tolerate any issue of uh, tension or promoting racism among the people of Sri Lanka or any kind of conflict. And uh, the media should also be very selective in the, in the news brings out to the world. So for that matter, therefore, at least the news should uh, be more factual and uh, calling for peace rather than disunity among the people of Sri Lanka. And this should be taken as a serious issue in order for us to have peace and harmony in Sri Lanka. Otherwise, uh, we shall give a clear view concerning our issue and we are still looking into the issue. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your suggestion.
So before we wrap up this uh, session, we would like to ask questions from the audience. Before you ask question, can you, can you please uh, address the panelists that you want to ask? Uh, I think I'll ask Mr. Uh, Okay. Uh, uh, can I ask you what you said? You said there are changes now. So uh, I wonder uh, if uh, the situation goes out of the end and there's an uprising, uh, what do you think should happen to you? All right. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Uh, I should also clarify this and uh, bring it to your notice that uh, the Sinaba government has defeated one of the strongest terrorist groups in this region. And uh, that means the government has, uh, it, it is capable of defeating any kind of destruction that may come up. Like I said, this government is ready to defend any peaceful means that comes up and we are not ready to tolerate any kind of disunity in the country. So in case of that, I think we shall take more measures that call for peace in the country and bring to harmony among the people Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, any other question from the audience? So since we are run out of time, so we will um, give only one more, one more chance for the audience to ask questions. Um, so I would like to ask, Okay, I will ask uh, Rianti. Okay, she said Muslim constitute and Shin Hill only has around 10% of a good relationship. How about the rest? Means 90%. Yeah, good relationship. Thank you. 